So, um, yeah, so I was saying I didn't have that much time to prepare anything, but uh, two weeks ago, we started working on this beach volleyball um, um, tidying problem from the Tidy Tuesday project. Uh, and we were looking at um, code by David Robinson, Steve Rob. Um, and so we only got to work through like the very beginning of it. Um, and so let me share my screen just so we can um, make sure we're all on the same page. Um, so, uh, it was start from um, the Google spreadsheet. Um, I basically just copy pasted uh, line number 20, which was our tiny data. Um, uh, and I added the direct link to the R markdown file from David Robinson that we're working on. Um, so if you click on that link and open it in a new tab, uh, sorry. Um, looks like this. Um, so um, GitHub will show you um, an art markdown file. It would like show you with a syntax highlighted in different colors. Um, and so here there's two options. One of them is to select all of the code inside um, and then copy paste it into an art markdown file. Or another one is um, you can click on draw. Um, again, here you can select everything and copy paste. Uh, with, uh, with Mac, you can select everything with, with command A. With Windows, it's control A, I believe. Um, and then copy paste it. Or right click, save as, um, and save it. But like in my Mac computer, you can notice here that uh, it's adding a .txt extension. So I had to like remove it after saving the attic. Um, um, and then once you have it on your computer, you can right click and then open with RStudio. Um, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> once you have it open in RStudio, you can increase the font size. Or you can start working with it. Um, so this one used 3D from packages. I mean, three different master packages. The Tidyverse is a package that installs that like loads a lot of other packages all uh, behind the scenes. So you use the Tidyverse. Scales, because that's a package that has some functions for adding like um, logarithmic scales and things like that, or like text to uh, legends. Um, Lubridate, which is a package about dates. Um, so I guess Lubri is for like lubrication or something like that. Um, and then date is just the, you know, time. Then it also uses a tidy Tuesday R package, which um, uh, you had installed already. But if you don't have that one installed um, from the RStats Club site on the slides material link, <coughs> I have here at the top on the line of code for installing the tidy Tuesday uh, package. Uh, which is a GitHub package. And so let me load those packages. So uh, we load those packages, um, and then um, the tidy to the R package has a function for uh, loading the data. Um, so let's run that. Um, 
So this will take a little bit of time to run. <laughs> Once it finishes running, uh, here we save that into the queues data object. If I just execute that on the help file uh, or on the we, uh, viewer, it uh, like opens um, this readme file that uh, describes the data, where it comes from, how you can download it, but then also has a data dictionary um, that is like a table that explains what each of the variables is. Um, so the name of the variable, what type of class it is, and a description of the variable. Um, and there's like a lot of them. Um, so um, that's like the tidy Tuesday uh, interface. And then after that, they were like, okay, you know, try to make any data analysis with this data. Um, or like you have to tidy it first, right? And so, um, what David Robinson does on his video is instead of accessing Hughes data, dollar sign, volleyball, uh, underscore matches, which is the table that has um, all the information on it. This is, um, Yeah, 76,000 76, rows, um, um, 65 columns. Instead of act, you know, typing this all the time, he um, saves it to the V, V underscore matches object. That way he has to type less stuff. Um, but then he's also using this pipe argument, uh, operator, sorry. Um, this pipe operator is defined in the Magritte package. Uh, um, um, what I shop just I'll post the link on the over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is my greater package is one of the tidyverse packages. Um, and it finds this um, piping operator, um, which I didn't really explain too much last time, although um, when we did the work, um, when we did the breakout rooms, there were several questions about it. The idea of this pipe operator is that it, it is equivalent to doing uh, the function call f and the argument x as, um, the, sorry, the object x as the first argument to the function f. So x pipe f is the same as this f open parenthesis x. Um, so what the pipe operator does is that it feeds in the left side, the data, as the first argument to the right side. Now, um, we don't, see this syntax as much. We mostly see the second syntax used a lot in the code by David Robinson, which is like X is piped into function uh, F with also the, the argument Y. And so this is equivalent to doing uh, F open parenthesis X comma Y. And that's because the data on the left side X is piped into the first argument of F. And so even though here it looks like Y is the first argument, this will be the second argument to the function F. Um, and um, the main reason because why like piping is like uh, used nowadays is because it's a lot more human readable. Um, so this more complex example says X is piped into F, then piped into G, then piped into H. And so the equivalent of that in the regular R syntax is doing function f of x, then the output of that using it as the input for function g, 
and then the output of function g using it as input for the function h, right? So this is like composite functions on the right side. On the left side, this is like piping. And so that makes the code a little more readable. So here lines 18 and 19, um, it could have also been done by say mutate um, the Q's data dollar sign BB matches and then say match ID is equal to row number. Um, um, so I believe this, this will work. Let me just do the head of it. Uh, yeah, so this works. Um, and it's the same thing as like lines 18 and 19, and then doing like head on BB matches or BB matches head. These two syntaxes are equivalent. Um, now it has a lot of different columns. That's why like um, it's not showing all of them uh, right now. Uh, it's only it only shows the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven columns, and then it says like oh we have fifty nine, fifty five more variables after that. Um, are there any questions so far about piping? Okay. It's just because our goal is to keep reading this code by, by David Robinson and understanding uh, what we can do uh, for tying and stuff. Um, and so <clears throat> um, after he created this object, uh, volleyball uh, matches, um, David Robinson does, done, then does a couple of explorations. He does the count exploration for, uh, he uses the count function, sorry, to explore the number of different circuits, tournaments, and date combinations, sort of them. He also uh, checks how many different gender options there are listed in this data set, uh, and then how many years there are. So let me just run one of them. Uh, so uh, circuit tournament date, returns a table with 703 different rows. So that means that there's 703 different unique combinations of the tournament, the circuit, and um, the data that it was played. Uh, so th this is just something that um, he does uh, to quickly get an idea of how big the data set, like what type of data do we have, and thus what type of analysis we can do. Uh, from gen for gender, there's only two options, male and, uh, uh, or men and women, sorry. Uh, um, um, then this was something that created a little of confusion because the code that David Robinson provides is as is. It's not like the, so like he was maybe typing some different explorations um, and in line, uh, let me return to the original line numbers. Um, in the, the original line number 30, uh, there's a problem here because there's nothing on the right side of the pipe. So if you run lines 29 at 30, you end up getting um, uh, you, well, here you ran them and it's like, R is like, oh, I'm waiting for something. Um, um, let's say if I run the whole chunk. Um, if I run the whole chunk, so all the lines here, 23 to 31, we get an error that says error, incomplete expression. Um, and so this error might not be really informative if this is the first time you're doing this. And so there was a lot of, there was uh, some confusion last time because uh, uh, understanding the source of this error uh, really um, is hard unless you know what like 
uh, piping is really doing. And so this is one of the things with, uh, with piping, you might need to debug things by just running internal parts of it. So for example, here I select the internal parts of line 29 and 30. I didn't run, I didn't select the, the pipe at the end. And if I execute that, that runs well. So I know that at least up until this point, the code is running well. And then we see that there's an extra pipe. So I can like comment it out. Um, and that will like now work. Um, you can comment out with the pound sign in R. Okay. So up, up until now, it's just all recap, I guess. Um, then uh, I believe we looked at this first full chunk um, last time. Um, um, and so there was a lot of things happening here. So this, he's creating uh, um, another table called volleyball uh, long, underscore long. Uh, so what he's, do he's doing right now is he's taking this um, data frame that has 76,000 rows. He's renaming some of the columns. So what was called uh, win underscore player one, he's now calling it win underscore P1 on the score name. Um, and he does this just to make it make, make the column names more consistent. So he's actually going to use the column names as data. Um, and so he's making them more consistent because like a lot of the other columns here are called are called like um, win or lose on the score P1 or P2 on the score some other thing. Um, and so he does that. Some of the column names were too short. So uh, win player one and win player two, lose player one, lose player two, win rank and lose rank. These only had one underscore. So he's creating names that have um, two different underscores and he's adding like some information um, that we can then extract. Um, uh, so he wants to use this format with like W or L as the very first part, then P1 or P2 as the second part, because then he can, ex he can extract um, uh, the winning and losing information, right? Uh, from a winner and loser information from a given mat uh, match. And so then he says, the mutate add function, this was a function um, that changes some variables. And so he says, um, the, var the variables that start with dot, uh, win or that start with uh, lose, he wants to make them character variables. Um, next is using a pivot longer function where he's saying that anything that starts with uh, winner or loser, he wants to um, make them into a long format instead of um, um, what we currently have. Um, Next, he's saying like, okay, I want to separate them by the name uh, into either um, uh, the column is going to be called winner loser and it's going to have um, uh, the player, so P1 or P2, and the name of the column. So that could be uh, name itself, or it could be rank, or it could be other things. Um, and so he's separating everything by an underscore. Um, then he's using these other extra arguments, extra and fill. Um, finally, he's saying, I want to change the winner loser column to make it uh, 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 capitalized. And so here he's using a function called string to upper. So it's making everything upper case. Uh, and it's only the winner loser column that he's doing that. So that's a lot of stuff there. Um, um, and we basically spent last time looking at this. I don't know if anyone has any questions about look, after looking at this again. No, all right. Uh, so once he has that long table, um, let's see how long this is. I think it was, uh, yeah, 4 million, 4 million, 144,000 rows. So that's a pretty long table now. 
um, he's saying like, okay, we don't, I don't need everything. So uh, he's gonna use the filter function to um, make sure that uh, the name column of the, of the, um, uh, doesn't contain any of the values called rank because he's like, oh, I don't think I need to use this for my analysis. So he removes that. Uh, next, he's going to say like, okay, everything that it has this name column, I'm going to like make it a bit uh, wider. Um, and then he's using the type underscore convert function to, um, to change the columns to whatever R thinks would be the best uh, column type for them. So, uh, that, you know, um, increase the number of variables from 16 to 26, but it also decreased the number of observations from like 4 million to 307,000. So like, if we check the column names of BB Long, we have circuit tournament, country, year, date, gender, match number, score, duration, bracket, round, match of beat, winner, loser, the player, the name. So those are things here he did in, in line 41. Uh, and then also value column. Um, so what what is this? So like if we look at, I'm gonna use the view, capital view function or VV underscore long. Um, so we look at the data at this point. I'm gonna to go to the right side. There's a column called name. And that one here has, let's say the, the value of it is for row number one is name, for row number two is birthday, age, then high, country, et cetera. And there's different, there's a lot of information here for P1, then the same stuff gets repeated for P2. Um, and then rank was the team one rank and then the team two rank um, gets showed up later. Um, I don't know, things like that. Um, and so um, if we go back to the code, he's like, okay, I wanna make a lot of this um, columns over here. These are really columns. I wanna make them more usable for me. So like make them tidy. So that means having a column for birth date, a column for name, a column for age, a column for height, country, et cetera. Um, and so he was, he's like, okay, I wanna spread the columns um, uh, into columns, whatever is inside the column name and then the actual, so the, the column name that will give us the, the, um, the actual new column names, but then the column value is the one that has the entries, right? And so that's why he's using the spread here command. Now the filter, he does that before spreading because he wants to remove um, entries like this, let's say like team rank one or team rank two. Uh, he didn't find that information useful. Um, so he removes it. But then um, information here under the value column is currently uh, a character. So if we look at VB long value, the class of it is a character, but some of these things are dates, some of them are numbers, um, some of them are text. And so it's, instead of figuring out like, okay, like, um, uh, birthday should be a date, age should be a number, height should be an integer number, things like that. He uh, uses the type convert uh, function for that. Um, so if we look at the column names of the result here, volleyball player matches. We see now that we have a lot of the same columns, but then we still have name. Um, but that's a different type of name. It's a bit confusing. But now we have a column name that is actual the actual player name, not the name of the column. Uh, so like we could have made this a bit like nicer by doing something like that. Call name, call name. Right, less confusing. Um, uh, just so, to differentiate like name of the player versus column name. Um, 
Um, I won't do that because maybe maybe he uses uh, uh, the old name in some of his code later on. Um, um, okay, so now we have a column for name of the player, then total aces, total attacks, blocks, dicks, totalers, blah, blah, blah. Um, but also one for birthday, age, height, country. So these are all things that were inside the name column. So we say like unique, maybe long dollar sign name. Uh, we see like containing this name, birthday, age, high country, rank, which we remove, total attacks. So all of those things became now columns in our, uh, in our uh, uh, volleyball player matches table. Um, and so at that point, he's like, okay, I have a pretty nice, tidy looking data set. Um, uh, what makes it tidy? Uh, let's look at it with the view function. Um, what makes it tidy is that we have one column per variable. So circuit, tournament, year, date, gender, um, uh, match number, um, the score, duration, bracket round, et cetera, match ID, uh, who won, who lost, age, et cetera. Um, and so all of this is uh, fairly tidy. Now, one row in this table is the, uh, the we have one row per player per match played. So uh, how do we know that? Because uh, the first four rows here have match ID one, but we have two winners, two losers, P1 and P2, right? Um, so that's the current format of this data set. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> Something he decides then to work is to extract the information at the set level. Um, so at this point, let's, uh, if you don't have any questions, we'll break up into, into breakout rooms again. Um, and then what I want you to do is uh, look at this lines 54 to 59, explore some of the functions. So you might look at the help file for them. So like what is, what is select doing, um, things like that. We wanna understand what's going on in these lines of code. Um, and so I'll, we'll use the breakout rooms, we'll reconvene, and then hopefully we have enough time to then also look at, um, uh, at, at the code over here um, by player. Um, and we'll see how much time we have. All right, so. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, uh, more breakout rooms. Oh, there's a question in the chat that I didn't see. Oh, um, Keenan, I miss your, I don't know when you sent your comment. I don't know if you want to mention. It's not a, it's not a question. It's just a comment. Uh, yeah, but. Oh, uh, I don't know what it was in reference to. Sorry. Oh, um, piping, basic piping. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's similar to the chaining in Pandas. And then if uh, you're familiar with just basic bash, obviously the pipe. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, thank you, Keenan. Uh, breakout rooms. All right, we're all back. Um, so who wants to volunteer and share their screen and explain to us um, a couple of the lines of code? Then we'll have another volunteer show, explain the rest. No volunteers? Can you hear me? Wait, I, I, I can go. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise I wanna start like selecting people. <laughs> oh man. Wait, I lost my Zoom button. There we go. Uh, 
So, so can you explain on your code lines 54 up to 56? Yeah, okay. So we're going to make this object VB sets, which is going to be a, a table made out of the data in VB matches. So the first thing that we do is we're going to select columns. And the I think that tidyverse makes column selection pretty easy because um, it's just column names and you don't have to put anything in quotes or anything. It like knows what you're talking about. Um, so this is kind of tricky too, where they do circuit colon to match number because they select everything in VB sets, all the columns between circuit and match number. So you don't have to type those either. Then we're also selecting score. So after we select all that, which basically just gives us a subset of a subset of this VB sets table. Um, v VB matches. Gonna, v yeah, the VB matches table. Um, we're going to separate the score. So um, like the score table right now, like the score column contains the scores from all of the games in the match. Um, sets. Yeah. yeah, all this, all the sets in the match. Got to work on my volleyball terminology, I guess. Um, so it separates them by a comma space, which is the something that's consistent in all of these. Um, but it also doesn't give us any more variables in it. So it only saves the first, I think it only saves that first, that first score. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know if you, so this first score is now, it's just that first score. It gets rid of everything after uh, comma space. So that's what happens between 54 and 56. Um, my understanding was that separate rows was going to make multiple rows for each uh, set. So can you show again the output up until before line 56? Okay, so this is 176 rows. Oh my gosh. And oh, okay, so yeah. maybe it does. So, so it like, does make so that like taller. Match ID number one has two sets, 2118 and then 2112. Oh, okay. Match ID two has three sets, 2116, 17, 21, 15, 10. That's because in, in, in volleyball, um, uh, normally matches are two, uh, two out of three uh, sets. Um, and uh, if there's a third set, the maximum score for that is 15, unless they're too close and then they keep going forever. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, like, so you l run everything again until line 56. Um, now we have match ID. We have two, uh, we have um, two rows for match ID number one, three rows for match ID number two. So you okay, kept so I see where I was confused, Leo. So this is separate rows instead of mm -hmm. just regular separate. So it makes it taller. Yeah. So that that's pretty um, that's pretty useful. Cool. Well, any questions on this? No. So uh, we need a second volunteer. Uh, we're gonna do this the R way. This one is gonna be one, Stephanie two, Nina three, Nick four, just five, and Kim six. Count me about to leave. I have a meeting right now. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, it's you. Um, <laughs> Nina, Nina just <laughs> fled. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. I did a sample. Like I'll show you the, I'll put, I'll paste the command. Okay. Um. All right. So, what it's doing here is that in um, mutate, it's taking if the score is like if the term retired is within the column score, then it's removing that. One tiny detail there is that it has to be space retired. 
Okay. So he's not, he's not it's doing not just a, the word retired. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, so he's doing an exact match. He's not doing um, a pattern matching. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what does that mean again? Uh, In terms what, of sorry? volleyball or? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> In terms of the space, what does that space do? So it's looking exactly for the, the spelling space, then retire, the word retired. Okay. That means because that there's going to be another word, space, retired, right? It has to be space, uh, space, then retired. If that's the entry for the score, then it removes it. Uh, but like another way to do it would be like if it contains the word retired, which is different. This one is an exact match. So um, maybe, we can, maybe we can explain this a bit more uh, next time. Yeah, I, I have, have no idea what this means. <laughs> yeah. Cool. You want to keep going, okay. Stephanie? Yeah. Then if, and I think I'm, I'm still a little confused here. So for me, this is if the score is forfeit or other, then it turns it to NA, or is it the opposite? That if it's NA, it turns it to forfeit or other? Right, like so. Sorry, it's becoming an ace. I think I said it incorrectly in one of the rooms. I just assumed, like, I, but I'm looking at the help file for the function. The okay. same, it's like creating an ace. And so if it has a word for feed or other. Okay. Someone knock then, on the door. <laughs> then this last line. If we run this, breaks up wins, like the score has two numbers of every set. The score has two numbers, 21 and 10 or whatever. And it's breaking those up into the winner score. Like it's creating two columns out of that one score column and making it two so that there's a column that has a 21 and a column that has a 10, right? Like this. Yep. And it also right. makes, uh, because it's using the convert equals true argument, it's okay. automatically converting the new columns into whatever is the best type of character for it, of, of type of vector for it. So, okay. because it's characters initially, now it's gonna become numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the separate- and so will it, hmm? will it keep it as a numerical? Like, will it create a numerical? So um, you can type on your console class open parenthesis um, VB underscore sets dollar sign let's say W underscore score. <laughs> this is like really tough to mention out loud. <laughs> okay. Now it became so an integer. An integer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it would have been numeric if it had decimals, but it doesn't have decimal numbers. Okay. Uh, uh, numerics take more memory to store than integers. So it's like, oh, it's not trying to waste any memory. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, we only. Stop share. So, I mean, we only looked at one code of new, new code of chunk, but I think, uh, I'm hoping you liked the session because uh, there's still like a lot of different functions and stuff. So maybe, maybe we can continue working through this um, uh, before we do more of the shiny stuff. Uh, um, cool. Um, let me share my screen a tiny bit, just for a minute or two, to try to explain the question with, uh, uh, with the space for Svitlana. Um, so, uh, I'm going to create a, a, a vector here. Um, the first entry is the space and then retire. The second one is going to be retired. Right. Um, X. All right. So I have two entries there. Um, one of the options is to like ask 
which of the entries of this vector x are exactly equal to space then the word retired. Another one is to do a function called grep, which will like search for a pat pattern inside a vector. Right. So these are two different ways of uh, of searching inside of um, strings. Um, and so line 57 in my code here is looking exactly for the pattern um, space comma retired. Um, instead of using the grep type of syntax. Does that answer your question? Uh, yep. I'll just put, mm -hmm. I'll put it on the, um, uh, on the chat. Okay. Um, where's the chat? Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Cool. Are there, are there any questions you don't want recorded? Anything else? Okay. Okay. Um, after Shiny, we're out of suggestions. So I would just wanted to remind everyone that, um, that we have a, a forum for suggestions. Uh, um, Stephanie mentioned in one of the breakout rooms that she's like working with some graphs. Um, maybe there's a specific suggestion there. Um, I don't know. Just, you know, if you think about stuff, um, please suggest it. Would you uh, post that link to where we're supposed to send suggestions to? Cause I, I couldn't find it. Where, where is um, it? Sure. Um, so, uh, let me just show my screen again. So we, if you go to the um, Google spreadsheet for uh, the code, uh, for the club, line number five there has a link to the suggest topics. Got it, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I didn't know it was up top. Mm -hmm. well, no worries. All right. well, uh, well, have a good weekend. See you. See you next Friday. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.